Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and yep, this just came out not too long ago, and so I thought I would get it out here, so in case you haven't seen it in the other venues, here it is. This is from the Attorney General, who is of course Bill Barr, and he put it out today, March 24th, and it went to Lindsey Graham, who's the chairman of the Senate Judiciary, uh, Diane Feinstein, who is the ranking member of that Senate Judiciary, and to Jerry Nadler, who's the chairman of the uh, House Judiciary, and then Doug Collins, who is the ranking member on the House Judiciary. And so here we go. As a supplement to the notification provided on Friday, March 22nd, 2019, I am writing today to advise you of the principal conclusions reached by Special Counsel Robert S. Mueller III and to inform you about the status of my initial review of the report he has prepared. The Special Counsel's report. On Friday, the Special Counsel submitted to me a confidential report explaining the prosecution or declination decisions he has reached, as required by 28 CFR Section 600.8C. This report is entitled Report on the Investigation into Russian Interference into the 2016 Presidential Election. Although my review is ongoing, I believe that it is in the public interest to describe the report and to summarize the principal conclusions reached by the special counsel and the results of his investigation. The report explains that the special counsel and his staff thoroughly investigated allegations that members of the presidential campaign of Donald J. Trump and others associated with it conspired with the Russian government in its efforts to interfere in the 2016 U.S. presidential election or sought to obstruct the related federal investigations. In the report, the special counsel noted that in completing his investigation, he employed 19 lawyers who were assisted by a team of approximately 40 FBI agents, intelligence analysts, forensic accountants, and other professional staff. The special counsel issued more than 2,800 subpoenas, executed nearly 500 search warrants, obtained more than 230 orders for communication records, issued almost 50 orders authorizing use of pen registers, made 13 requests to foreign governments for evidence, and interviewed approximately 500 witnesses. Now, when it comes back and Jerry Nadler is saying, well, we need to keep investigating, my question to him is, do you think that you have more power than this at your disposal? No, you don't. And if Mueller couldn't come up with something, then what do you think you're going to come up with, Jerry? <sighs> anyway, let me go on. The special counsel obtained a number of indictments and convictions of individuals and entities in connection with this investigation, all of which have been publicly disclosed. During the course of his investigation, the special counsel also referred several matters to other offices for further action. The report does not recommend any further indictments, nor did the special counsel obtain any sealed indictments that have yet to be made public. Now, there's been a lot of people saying that, oh, those sealed indictments, those are for Trump people. No, they're not. Okay, this lays that to rest. Sorry. No. Below, I summarize the principal conclusions set out in the special counsel's report. Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. The special counsel's report is divided into two parts. The first describes the results of the special counsel's investigation into Russian's interference in the 2016 presidential election. The report outlines the Russian effort to influence the election and documents crimes committed by persons associated with the Russian government in connection with those efforts. The report further explains that a primary consideration for the special counsel's investigation was whether any American Americans, including individuals associated with the Trump campaign, joined the Russian conspiracies to influence the election, which would be a federal crime. The special counsel's investigation did not find that the Trump campaign or anyone associated with it conspired or coordinated with Russia in its efforts to influence the 2016 U.S. presidential election. As the report states, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities. So, when you hear anybody on the left in the left-wing media saying, Oh, look, you know, there's still something out there. No, there's not. Okay? 
There was no collusion whatsoever, no conspiracy. The special counsel's investigation determined that there were two main Russian efforts to influence the 2016 election. Nobody's questioning this. The first involved attempts by a Russian organization, the Internet Research Agency, to conduct disinformation and social media operations in the United States designed to sow social discord, eventually with the aim of interfering with the election. As noted above, the special counsel did not find that any U.S. person or Trump campaign official or associate conspired or knowingly coordinated with the IRA in its efforts, although the special counsel brought criminal charges against a number of Russian nationals and entities in connection with these activities. By the way, you need to remember that one of those Russian entities that it brought uh, an indictment against actually did not exist. Okay, so you got to question that, you know, why did they indict somebody, some company that didn't even exist at the time that this happened? Hmm. The second element involved the Russian government's efforts to conduct computer hacking operations designed to gather and disseminate information to influence election. The special counsel found that Russian government actors successfully hacked into computers and obtained emails from persons affiliated with the Clinton campaign and Democratic Party organizations and publicly disseminated those materials through various intermediaries, including WikiLeaks. I question that. OK, I understand that's maybe what he says, but that's not what happened, because we know for sure that from Julian Assange himself, that WikiLeaks did not get the DNC emails from the Russians. OK, in fact, he said from no state actor. So that means no country provided it to him and it was given to him pretty obviously, he said he didn't actually admit that Seth Rich gave him to him, but because he connected Seth Rich's death right there at the same time that he was talking about this matter in one of his interviews, it's very obvious that he got the information from Seth Rich without actually technically saying it. He really did confirm it. Based on these activities, the special counsel brought criminal charges against a number of Russian military officers for conspiring to hack into computers in the United States for purposes of influencing the election. Okay, now I'm not going to question that maybe Russians did hack into some computers, but they were not the source of the DNC leaks to WikiLeaks, okay? But as noted above, the special counsel did not find that the Trump campaign or anyone associated with it conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in these efforts, despite multiple offers from Russian affiliated individuals to assist the Trump campaign. And you'll notice here, this uh, was one of the footnotes in assessing potential conspiracy charges. The special counsel also considered whether members of the Trump campaign coordinated with Russian election interference activities. The special counsel defined coordination as an agreement, tacit or express, between the Trump campaign and Russian government on election interference. So in other words, they really did look into the different matters. So that is laid to rest. What happens there is that takes all of these talking points that the Democrats and the left-wing media have been saying for, what, two years now? It just takes all of that away and proves it all to be one big fat lie. So anyway, obstruction of justice. Now this part right here is a little bit different. And I want you to pay kind of close attention here because I'm not sure what's going to come out of this. I think this is probably what the Democrats are going to cling to as their only salvation. Okay. Obstruction of justice. The report's second part addresses a number of actions by the president, most of which have been the subject of public reporting that the special counsel investigated as potentially raising obstruction of justice concerns. After making a thorough factual investigation into these matters, the special counsel considered whether to evaluate the conduct under department standards governing prosecution and declination decisions, but ultimately decided not to make a traditional prosecutorial judgment. The special counsel, therefore, did not draw a conclusion one way or the other as to whether the examined conduct constituted obstruction. Instead, for each of the relevant actions investigated, the report sets out evidence on both sides of the question and leaves unresolved what the special counsel views as 
difficult issues of law and fact concerning whether the president's actions and intent could be viewed as obstruction. The special counsel states that while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. The special counsel's decision to describe the facts of his obstruction investigation without reaching any legal conclusions leaves it to the attorney general to determine whether the conduct described in the report constitutes a crime. Over the course of the investigation, the special counsel's office engaged in discussions with certain department officials regarding many of the legal and factual matters at issue in the special counsel's obstruction investigation. After reviewing the special counsel's final report on these issues, consulting with department officials, including the Office of Legal Counsel, and applying the principles of federal prosecution that guide our charging decisions, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein and I have concluded that the evidence developed during the special counsel's investigation is not sufficient to establish that the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. Our determination was made without regard to and is not based on the constitutional considerations that surround the indictment and criminal prosecution of a sitting president. Okay, now with this, note that Rod Rosenstein is in on this too. Remember, Rod Rosenstein is deep state, or at least the deep state people think he's working for them. And so he is adding weight to this just because he put his name on it and that he agreed with Attorney General Barr. Now, do they have any evidence whatsoever of this obstruction of justice? No. But I think this is what the Dems are going to latch on to, and they're going to start building a case about. But no, there really is not anything to this. They really can't do much with it. In making this determination, we noted that the special counsel recognized that the evidence does not establish that the president was involved in an underlying crime related to Russian election interference, and that... While not determinative, the absence of such evidence bears upon the president's intent with respect to obstruction. Generally speaking, to obtain and sustain an obstruction conviction, the government would need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a person acting with corrupt intent engaged in obstructive conduct with a sufficient nexus to a pending or contemplated proceeding. Okay, now in this case, remember, Trump knows he's innocent. He knows there's nothing there. The special counsel has just verified that there was no collusion. So it's hard to prove that he obstructed anything when there was nothing to obstruct, right? So it's kind of weird, especially since Mueller, in his original letter that he sent out, like on the 22nd, I believe it was, when he released the report, he sent out to Congress and said, hey, I'm releasing the report. Here it is. And because of that, in there, he mentioned that there was no time when they were denied any resource or anything that obstructed what they were trying to do. So I find it very hard to believe that they'll be able to focus in on what's said here and that it would contradict really what he said in that original letter. So those seem to be at odds with me uh, when I read through this. In cataloging the president's actions, many of which took place in public view, the report identifies no actions that, in our judgment, constitute obstructive conduct, had a nexus to a pending or contemplated procedure, and were done with corrupt intent, each of which, under the department's principles of federal prosecution guiding charging decisions, would need to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt to establish an obstruction of justice offense. So even... Though there's some things that maybe Mueller questioned, it's like, well, it doesn't look like it to us. That's what Barr is saying. Status of the department's review. The relevant regulations contemplate that the special counsel's report will be a confidential report to the attorney general. Now, remember, these are like the laws on the books. And so Barr can't change these because all he can do is uphold existing law. He can't make new laws, and he can't rewrite existing ones. So it says, see Office of Special Counsel 64, Federal Register 37038, 
37, and so forth. As I have previously stated, however, I am mindful of the public interest in this matter. For that reason, my goal and intent is to release as much of the special counsel's report as I can, consistent with applicable law, regulations, and departmental policies. Based on my discussions with the special counsel in my initial review, it is apparent that the report contains material that is or could be subject to federal rule of criminal procedure 6e which imposes restrictions on the use and disclosure of information relating to matters occurring before a grand jury now it's very interesting there's a lot of reference that's been going on to grand juries and that things cannot be disclosed if they are being used in a grand jury so i think this is kind of setting things up for when all of this starts coming out Anyway, Rule 6E generally limits disclosure of certain grand jury information in a criminal investigation and prosecution. Disclosure of 6E material beyond the strict limits set forth in the rule is a crime in certain circumstances. This restriction protects the integrity of grand jury proceedings and ensures that the unique and invaluable investigative powers of grand jury are used strictly for their intended criminal justice function. Given these restrictions, the schedule for processing the report depends in part on how quickly the department can identify the 6E material that by law cannot be made public. Okay, now, if you watched my previous video, the one that came out just before this, I was talking about the organization Move On. They have stated on their website that they're going to have 500 events going on to protest it if all of the report is not made public. And they emphasize that all of the report. Well, by law, all of the report cannot be made public. But if they don't get what they want, they're going to cause these 500 events. What are the events going to be? I don't know. I assume protests of some kind. But in the past, the left has not always been nice with their protests. So be alert, you know, kind of keep an eye on that website if in case they decide that, yeah, it's not being revealed to us, that Barr is hiding something. That's what they're saying. It's a cover-up. But it's not. And he's just trying to abide by the law. I mean, this is the guy who is the top law enforcement officer in our country right now. He can't do anything but that. That is what he has to do because that's what the law says. So it's kind of crazy that they want him to do something that's not legal. (laughs) <laughs> but that's to uphold the rule of law, so they say. Anyway, I have requested the assistance of the special counsel in ad- identifying all 6E information contained in the report as quickly as possible. Separately, I also must identify any information that could impact other ongoing matters, including those that the special counsel has referred to other offices. As soon as that process is complete, I will be in a position to move forward expeditiously in determining what can be released in light of applicable law, regulations, and departmental policies. We shouldn't be surprised at this because this is exactly what the man said during his hearing. He's going to put out whatever he can as long as it's not in violation of the law. That's pure and simple. But, of course, I think that the Democrats are not going to be satisfied with that, and they're going to assume that anything that's not released then is covering up. But it's not because he's just following the law. So, anyway, as I observed in my initial notification, the special counsel regulations provide that the attorney general may determine that public release of notifications to your respective committees would be in the public interest. I've so determined, and I will disclose this letter to the public after delivering it to you. And of course, by now, this is everywhere on many, many different sites. You've probably already seen it. I don't know, but I wanted to put it up there I had somebody say, well, why aren't you talking about the Mueller report? Well, it was because we really didn't have much to say at that point. And now we have a little bit more to go on. We know for certain that there are no more indictments, not even sealed ones that haven't been unsealed. But there have been some matters referred to other outlets, and we don't know what those contain. But we do know that Trump had no collusion, no conspiracy between anyone in the Trump organization, in his entire campaign, nobody had any conspiracy with any Russians so that we can lay to rest. 
And that takes a big wind out of the sails. So when we watch news from here on out, we need to take that into consideration. If they continue with saying Trump is guilty of something, even though we have this information, then we know that they're promoting their own agenda. And I'm working on another video that hopefully will kind of show this, but it's going to take me a little while to edit that particular one. So anyway... That's what I've got for you tonight. I want to thank you for stopping by. The links will be down below, just like they always are. And you can read it for yourself, share it, pass it around. Because essentially it says, you know what? Trump was right all along. It was a witch hunt. Because a witch hunt is when you accuse someone of doing something, yet you have no evidence to prove it. And that's exactly why people in the witch trials were accused and executed sometimes because they were just accused. People didn't like them. They made claims about them that were not true and there was no evidence to back it up. And that's what a witch hunt is. That's what they did to Donald Trump. That's what they're still trying to do. And it's just not going to work. So anyway, that's it for tonight. I want to thank you for stopping by and I'll see y'all later. Mm -hmm.